me that, I, that's what I said. Wow. Jeremy, I heard you say that this morning. Building on the right foundation requires surrender. Coming from Luke 22, 42. Surrender means to completely give up our own will and subject, bring all of our thoughts, all of our ideas, and all of our acts, all of our deeds under the teaching of God. That's what Jesus died for. Because he knew we couldn't do it. The calling, Apostle taught this last Sunday, last Wednesday. The calling doesn't matter. That calling that we have on our life does not matter if we do not surrender. Hmm. Matthew 22 and 14 says, For many are called, invited, summoned, but few are chosen. Not all are among the chosen because not all will believe, adhere to, rely on, cling to, or trust in the word of God. The chosen have met all the requirements that are called for in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. They have met all of these requirements. And these requirements begin with verse 5, and it says, For this very reason, applying your diligence to the divine promise, make every effort in exercising your faith. This is how you exercise your faith. To develop moral excellency. Moral excellences. That's the character of Christ. That's your moral excellence. And... In moral excellence, you got to develop knowledge. Knowledge is gaining insight into the word of God and understanding it through the, 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 the pastor and the Holy Spirit. Moral, you've got to gain insight into it. We can't just hear this word and say we know it. We got to understand what this word means. And that calls. That's why he has sent the apostle, to teach us what that word means. He doesn't want us to try to do it on our own because we use our own understanding. We use our little head knowledge. And we think we know what it means. And that's not, that's not what it means. And in your knowledge, you need self-control. You need to learn how to control you. That's what we have to do. Learn how to control our thoughts, our wills, and our emotions. Learn how to control these things. And we can't do this without the Holy Spirit. And in your self-control, you need to be steadfast. Have endurance. Patience. Put up with. Wait. Don't try to rush God. Because God is working stuff out in us. Might seem like he's taking a long time, but you remember, God knows what he's doing. Yeah. God digs deep. Yeah. He's got a rotor rooter named the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He goes down there and dig out all that mess that's in us. And he brings it out. Yeah. And he brings it out. And when it's brought up, yeah. we've got to receive it. Yeah. And in your, in your uh, steadfastness, you need goodness. You need the goodness of God. You need the goodness of God reigning in your life at all times. God is good. Yeah. Just like God is love, that's who God is. That's not what he's made of. That's who he is. He's good. And in godly, godliness, we need brotherly love. We got to love each other like they are our brothers and sisters. They are brothers and sisters in Christ. We've got to love. And in brotherly affection, we got to have agape love. God's love. God's love. 
that steadfast love, that love that, that, that would, that's, that's willing to go beyond to help a person that's in need. And that's in, mostly in need of Christ. Yes, yes. <sighs> Learn to unselfishly seek the best for others and to do things for, for their benefit. Amen. We got to always do things for people's benefit. We can't always say, well, you know, we, well, I, I can't, that, that's hard to do because they're not doing right. You can't worry about it. Now we're getting into God's place. Now we have just stepped out of it. God put us and got over there and tried to sit on the throne. We can't worry about what they're doing. What we do is what God tells us to do. Didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't he? I know he did on my behalf. And I was the worst of worst. And if he put up with me, that's why he told me about a uh, 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 donna years ago, he said, I waited on you. Fifty some years. And if I waited on you, I can wait on her. Amen. So we can't press anybody. That's God's job. God works on the inside. We can't work on the inside. Those people on our jobs that's acting crazy, that's God's business. You just love them. That's all you do. You don't try to figure out why they're acting the way they act. Love them. Yes, the way we used to act. I know how I did. So we have got to learn. If we learn how to do what God has called us to do, then we are surrendering to God. We are surrendering to his will, and he is able to work through us. Surrender begins when we stop struggling. Let go of control and trust God. Luke 7, 23 says, Blessed, joyful, spiritually favored is he who does not take offense at me. God, Jesus talking. Now let's listen at this. Uh, we can go through life thinking we are spiritually healthy when the truth confronts us with our, about our sins that we are struggling with. We can be offended by Christ, the Word. If we see ourselves offended by the gospel, no. That the area we are, we the area we need to know that that's the area that we need to work on. Did not Apostle teach that? He taught that, and you know it's one thing I have learned: teach what he teach. If I teach what he teaches, then God will back me. Okay, all right. So we see here that if we become offended, and I'm talking about me now, when I used to sit there and wherever else I was and get offended, then when I became offended with God's word, that means that I have not surrendered to God's word. And if I have not surrendered to God's word, I'm, I'm wasting my time. So what did I learn how to do? I learned how to pray and ask God to help me not to become offended with his word. To help me receive that word for so that word to do a work in me. And I didn't pray that one time. I didn't pray that two times. I didn't pray that ten times. I prayed that a number of times until I was able not to become offended with that word. Because when I become offended with that word, I'm offended with God. And his son. Yes. Yes. And you're offended by what he's saying. Even the more. Even the more. Do not, Romans 6 and 13 says, do not go on offering members of your body to sin. See, when you get offended, you have offered your mind. Your mind is what your mind is what's becoming offended. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. That old soulish man. 
That's what's becoming offended. So you can't go on offering that mind, will, and emotion to, uh, 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 to, to, to wickedness, Offend, that, that twisted thinking. He talking about me. Woo, Jesus, I used to say that in, inside. I didn't say it outside, and I didn't say it to anybody. But God heard it. God heard it. God heard it. But offer yourselves to God in a de decisive act as those alive, raised from the dead to a new life. And your members, all of your abilities, your mind, your will, and your emotions, make them be sanctified and set apart as instruments of righteousness, yielded by yielding yourself to God, Amen. surrendering to God, surrendering to God, surrender to God. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Jesus said in, in Luke, our apostle just read it, Luke 22, 42. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup of divine wrath from me. Let not my will, let not my will, but always your will. As soon as he said, he corrected himself. Let not my will, but always your will be done. Always. Abraham did it in Genesis 22. One and three. Genesis, Genesis 22, one and, three, one and three says, one through three. Now, after these things, God tested, tested his, the faith. So when you're going through stuff on your job and, 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 and wherever, what is God doing? Testing your faith. Yeah. Testing your faith. You say you believe. Okay, now let's see. God is testing your faith to see if you really believe him. And he's going to send, like I told my people in Sunday school this morning, he's going to send uh, that thorn, that, that messenger, that messenger. And like I told him, whenever you see the ER on the word, it's one who messes with you. Like a teacher is one who teaches you. Uh-huh. A follower is one who follows. Whenever you see an ER, it's one who does something. So a messenger is one who brings the message. So that devil, he's going to allow that devil to send that messenger to, to, to pluck your last nerve. <laughs> Testing your faith. Uh-huh. Don't think that I've been through so much. No, you haven't been through it. You ain't self sweat blood yet. You ain't sweated blood yet. <laughs> Keep going through. I've not sweated blood yet. All right. Uh, uh, test the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he, and he answered, here I am. And God said, take now your son, your only son of, of promise, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I shall tell you. So Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split the wood for the burnt offering, and then he got up and went to the place to which God had told him. Did he do God's will? Did he surrender to God? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And that's what God wants us to do. And if we look at uh, uh, what God requires of us in Malachi 6 and 8. Malachi 6 and 8. Okay, let me get that one. This is yellow. Okay. Malachi 6 and 8. Now, we see here in Malachi 6 is when uh, God showed his people, Israel, that he had an indictment against them. He had an indictment against them because they were doing what they wanted to do. So Israel claim, Israel's claiming, in, in verse 6, Israel is claiming ignorance about what is acceptable uh, uh, to, the, to God. He said in verse 6, uh, with what shall I come before the Lord? Since you, you're saying that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, God was telling them that, 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 that uh, uh, oh, my people, 
What have I done to you since you have turned away from me? And so uh, Israel said, well, oh, my Lord, what, 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 what shall we do? Uh, what shall I come before the Lord with to honor him? And how myself before God on how? And bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before you with burnt offerings, with ye, uh, uh, yearly calves? Will the Lord be delighted with thousands of rams or with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I present my firstborn for my acts of rebellion? You see how they're acting toward God. The fruit of my body for the sins of, the, of, of my soul? Go, oh, here God comes. God comes in verse 8 and he says, I have told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you except to be just? Yep. That means do what's right. right. Do what's right. Be just. Do what's right. You know what we know what's right. We know when we're doing right and we know when we're doing wrong. Do what's right. And to love and to diligently practice kindness and compassion you got to I don't care how mean and low down people are to you you got to be kind and compassionate to them that's a requirement that's a requirement from God you got to be kind and compassionate you can't you can't pull your earrings off and throw your shoes off can't do that you can't talk about them and tell them who they are they, they, they they get enough of that in the street. They know they're like that. You got to be kind and compassionate. Kind and compassionate. And to walk humbly with your God. That means completely depending on him for everything. Walk humbly before God. Setting aside any overblown sense of importance, we ain't important, or self righteousness. Our self righteousness. We got to let it all go. A girl came by my house uh, yesterday to visit, and I was so glad to see her. She went, went to church with me at Mount Calvary. I was so glad to see her. And all of that self righteousness she had is all gone. She let me know that, I said, girl, you look, you look good to be 60 years old. She said, all of my glory, everything that I have and that I am comes from God. She said, Mother Abram, it's nothing that I have done for myself but surrendered myself to God. I said, now that's what I'm talking about. That makes you look good. That makes you look good when you surrender yourself to God. Yes, yes. Proverbs, surrender, okay. Surrender is an act of defeat over death. An act of defeat over death. See, you have defeated death when you surrender. See, the wages of sin, when, if you don't surrender, you act in a, you, what, what, did, what did apostles say about it's either, you either grow or die? Uh-huh, or either you're dying. If, uh, right, so... You're not standing still. So it to, it, the way to defeat death is to surrender yourself to God. Yep. Surrender yourself to God. As we talked about you giving your members, surrendering all your members to him, that's the way to defeat death. The foundation, the foundation or point of surrender is obedience to the word of God. God requires that we surrender every area of our life to him. Not part of it, but every area to him. In Philippians, uh, let me see. Okay. We talked about. It. Oh, okay. Proverbs. Let's look now at Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. Proverbs 3. Let's see what he's saying. He says, my son, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For your length of days, you live a long time, and years of life worth living. They'll be worth living. You're not sick. 
You're not beat down. You're not in a wheelchair. You're up and at, you're up and about doing God's will. You're getting out there at 82 cutting your yard. He wasn't talking to us. He was, that's right. That's right. Yes. He said, if you keep my word, obey my word, do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to live a long, good life, a healthy life, a healthy life. Yes, you'll be able to enjoy it. And tranquility, that's you'll have peace in your life. And prosper, prosperity. That's your, you'll be successful in your life. Yeah. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire, but you'll be successful you'll in your life. You'll have, and more than, you'll have more than enough. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. But it all depends on surrender. Surrendering to God, doing what God says to do. With wholeness of life, blessings, they will add to you. Do not let mercy and kindness and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Bind them securely around your neck. Write them on the table of your heart. So find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Not only will, you, will God honor you, man will honor you. Jayla, do you talk about that promotion? Uh-huh. That first came from God. Uh-huh. Because you have been honoring God. You have been doing what God has asked you to do. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. In Philippians 2 and 12, uh, if we learn that if we don't submit, we can't work out our own salvation. God works, God works that he wants us to work out our works of relationship relationship he wants us to work on our relationship and this is what we learned this morning we work because we are born again our works of relation relationship uh we're gonna look at this right quick and then we'll be coming to an end works of relationship philippians 2 12 so then, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but, but now much more in my absence, work, continue to work out your salvation. That is, cultivate it, bringing it to full effect, effective pursuing spiritual maturity. Do you know what kind of works he's telling you to work out? Work out everything that we, work, we read about over in Second Peter? Work out everything that we, work, we, we read about over in Ephesians, Ephesians 5 and uh, your fruit of the Spirit. All of this stuff, this is God's work that he wants us to work out. And, and you can, then you can do the other works that God has called you to do. If you learn how to do it first in love, joy, peace, all of these things. But you first got to learn how to cultivate these areas of your life. Okay? Uh, pursue spiritual maturity with awe-inspired fear and trembling, using serious cautions and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of, of Christ. See, you, that's how you work out your salvation. You got to make sure you're not offending God by offending others. Amen. Can't offend others. He says in 13, For it is not your strength, but it is Christ God who is effectively at work in you both to will and to work. That is, strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. See, these are the works that he has put before us before the foundation of the earth. That's, that, that's what Jesus walked in, and he wants us to walk in them too. Then you are able to go out and help the poor. Then you are able to go out and feed the hungry. Then to clothe people. Then you're able to lead people to Christ. Once you learn how to cultivate all of the works that God has put in you. Everything, all of the fruit of the Spirit, everything in Second Peter, those things in the Corinthians, those things in Romans, everything in the Word. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. It's God's work. It's God working these things through you. This is how he makes you a masterpiece. This is how he makes you a masterpiece. Okay. Uh, 
God's grace, his power, his ability, his enablement, the Holy Spirit works in us always. His work always is dependent upon our cooperation. We've got to cooperate with God. We've got to cooperate and do what God tells us to do. In Matthew 22 and 37, you shall know the Lord. You shall love the Lord your God. This is the first thing to do with relationships. You've got to love God first, to love him first with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with your whole being. Everything in you has got to be dedicated to God. God, God, you can't, you can't serve God on Sundays and go back to serving self on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You got to serve God all uh, every day with, your, with, with all of you. God requires devotion, devoted love, a, a love inspired by his love to us when he gave us his son for our sins. Verse 39 tells us we got to love uh, our, our neighbors as we love ourselves. So we have got to, we can't stop loving. I don't care how bad, mad, bad people treat you or make you mad. You can't stop loving those people. Right. You have given your life to Christ. Right. And if you want Christ, if you want Christ to honor you, then you've got to honor him by walking in obedience. Right. Not to walk in obedience. You got to. <sighs> I was telling the pastor, they, they, the people across the street are telling, they, they pull Police made a move those already cars out of the yard, and they say I call the police on. Them. I ain't call the police on nobody. Yeah. I ain't studying them police. I ain't what is studying them cars. Yeah. Yeah. They had to blame me. But you think that's worried me? No, I still. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody doing that but that old Miss Abel. Yeah, yeah, but you got to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Right. And who is your neighbor? Anybody that's in, that has a need, any kind of need is your neighbor. That can be your wife, yeah. your husband. Yeah. You got to love and respect them. Yeah. You got to always do that. That's, that's a need that God has required. The pastor told us so beautifully on that this morning. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to love your husband. You got to respect your husband. And that husband got to love you and respect and, 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 and do for you the same way Jesus did for the church. Same way. You got to, you got to learn how to raise your children. Nick and Je Jeremy, you all are doing a good job with your children. Keep it up. Keep it up. One day these days, you're going to have to go back there and get a Jesus switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what Marissa used to call her when I take her to, to, to church. She said, please don't get no Jesus switch. She's about two years old because I had to bring that switch in there and put it in, in, in the pew. And when she saw that switch, it stung, it stung those little legs and she would sit still. Yep. So we got to learn how to train our children, to discipline our, our children. We can't let them out of their way. Can't let them do it. Got to start it now. Um, so what's the baby's name? Leah. Leah, do you all want Leah to, uh, to open that, that, that thing? And no, don't say it's okay now, because we, we don't want to replace me every week. <laughs> is, is, is it necessary that she uh, twist it over? Does she know what she's doing? She does. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Also, you, we, we have to be good stewards. It's on here, too, over everything. You have to be good stewards. So we don't give a child an a, a adult's job. You see, so make sure she knows what she's doing, so it will not be replaced. Cause the pastor will have to spend another seven, eight hundred dollars to go buy some more, because we have let a child do an adult job. You understand what I'm saying? Uh huh. So we have to be real careful with what we, the, the duties that we give little children. Okay. All right. Uh, understand that our jobs are. Uh, we're on our jobs so that we can help people be led to Christ, lead people to Christ, show them how to act, show them how to give up the old life and, and surrender to the new life. That's what we're on our jobs for. We're, on, we're not on our jobs to get rich. God supplies our needs. Apostle told us that this morning. He told me years ago, 
I'm your source. He said, but I'm using your children as your resource. You know, the, a, resource, a resource is a distribution center. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stewardship is our responsibility over all that God has given us. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 26 says, the whole world is the Lord's and everything in it belongs to him. So we have got to be good stewards over everything that God has given us. We cannot, we cannot just let things go. We got to take care of everything. He's watching. You say well, you want you want more? All right, what you doing with that you have? Woo, Sister Abram, you meddling. <laughs> Philippians 1 and 6 says, the Holy Spirit has to be present for God's work to mature in believers. When we totally surrender to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will take, make his abode in each of us and help us live in obedience to God, God's will and purpose. So we need the Holy Spirit. For, uh, be, he says, being confident of this very thing, that, that, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God's faithfulness is always available for faithful believers, but we got to surrender. He'll pre perform it if we surrender. 2 Timothy says, 2 Timothy 2 and 3, 13 says, if we are faithful, he remains faithful, true to his word and his righteous character, for he cannot deny himself. God will do what he says he will do if we do what he has asked us to do. Okay. And don't get upset. Don't get offended. Remember, 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 you can't get take offense. The word is the, what straightens us out and helps us to surrender to God. That's your word. Thank mm -hmm. you.